From being abused and manipulated since birth to almost single-handedly causing the extermination of all life in the universe, Nebula has had a really rough go of it. But it made for probably the most interesting story arc of all the 400,000 characters we've met in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hi, I'm T1J. Follow me. By the way, this video contains spoilers for all these movies. So Nebula is a cybernetically enhanced alien assassin. She's the adopted daughter of the main big bad evil guy at this phase of the MCU, Thanos. Thanos is a genocidal warlord whose main gig is traveling from planet to planet and slaughtering half the population. Because in his mind, there aren't enough resources in the universe to accommodate all the people. So his solution? Get rid of half the people. And then just for kicks, he also sometimes kidnaps some of their children, who he then indoctrinates with his ideology and trains to eventually become his devoted personal assassins. Sounds like a great guy. Nebula was one of those children, and she grew up to become one of Thanos' most ruthless and cold-hearted assassins. But as you might imagine from a guy with an eight-figure kill count, Thanos is not a very compassionate guy. He forced Nebula to undergo painful and abusive training, which often involved fighting Gamora, another assassin that Thanos stole away at a young age, so Nebula and Gamora grew up as sisters. Gamora was always the better fighter, which caused Thanos to favor her and treat Nebula like the blue-faced stepchild. This is actually how she became the half-mechanical creature that she is. As a child, my father would have Gamora and me battle one another in training. Every time my sister prevailed, my father would replace a piece of me with machinery, claiming he wanted me to be her equal. But she won. Again and again and again, never once. Refraining. All of this would cause Nebula to grow up harboring an intense hatred of Thanos, but at the same time she remained loyal and obedient because he's fucking huge, but also because she always felt pressure to live up to his expectations. Nebula also resents her sister Gamora because Gamora always outshined and embarrassed her, and Thanos was never shy about the fact that Gamora was the one he preferred. You alienated my favorite daughter Gamora. So Nebula sees Gamora as partially, if not largely, responsible for her abuse. Thanos pulled my eye from my head, and my brain from my skull, and my arm from my body. At some point, Nebula and Gamora are both assigned to help out this guy, Ronin. He's another genocidal maniac. There's a bunch of those in these stories. Ronin has been tasked with acquiring an Infinity Stone for Thanos. Infinity Stones are like super powerful cosmic gems, and if you collect all six of them, you essentially get admin powers over the universe. Thanos basically wants to use them to streamline the process of global massacre. All that fuel he uses to fly from planet to planet ain't cheap, not to mention he has thousands of minions in his huge alien army to arm and feed. He probably burns through a lot of money and resources. Or actually, he probably just steals it from people. Either way, the power of the six infinity stones would make it much easier for him to accomplish his goal. With all six stones, I could simply snap my fingers. They would all cease to exist. I call that mercy much more efficient. Oh, and if this is the first time you're learning about Thanos' plan, you might ask, why doesn't he just use the stones to make more resources? And if you want to, you can consult any of the 10,000 Reddit threads of people debating this. The basic answer is because he's not a good guy. Incidentally, Gamora had been planning to betray Thanos this whole time. It turns out she didn't enjoy all the violence and abuse either. Go figure. In her mission to do that, Gamora gets tangled up with a group of absolute goofballs, and their combined idiocy causes the stone to be somewhat easily taken by Ronan. But this group ends up kind of liking each other and sticking together. After Ronan gets the stone though, he decides he doesn't need to take orders from Thanos anymore, because he just got a power up. Thanos is the most powerful being in the universe. Not anymore. Nebula immediately pledges her service to Ronan because she thinks this is her opportunity to finally free herself of Thanos' tyranny. After Xandar, you were going to kill my father? You dared to oppose me. You see what he has turned me into? 
You kill him, I will help you destroy a thousand planets. And Ronan gets started on that whole destroying a planet thing pretty much immediately. These guys really need a hug. Gamora and her new squad help defend the planet and they eventually defeat Ronan with the power of friendship. This team comes to be known as the Guardians of the Galaxy. With her new meal ticket out of the picture though, Nebula is forced to escape. Nebula knows that she can't return to Thanos after betraying him, so she sets off on her own, dead set on eventually getting her revenge on her father and her sister. Eventually Nebula does track down Gamora while the Guardians are visiting a remote planet. A planet which, by the way, also turned out to be an ancient evil godlike being who wanted to, you guessed it, do some genocide. But anyway, Gamora's new friends must be making her soft because Nebula takes advantage of an act of mercy from Gamora to finally defeat her in combat for the first time. But when she's in position to make the final strike, she realizes that killing Gamora isn't really what she wants. I win. I win. I bested you in combat. No. I saved your life. Well, you were stupid enough to let me live. You let me live. I don't need you always trying to beat me. I'm not the one that just flew across the universe just because I wanted to win. Do not tell me what I want. I don't need to tell you what you want. It's obvious. You were the one who wanted to win, and I just wanted a sister. And Gamora never realized this because she was busy trying to survive herself. I was a child like you. I was concerned with staying alive until the next day, every day. And I never considered what Thanos was doing to you. I'm trying to make it right. You will always be my sister. So the sisters reconcile, understanding that they were both in a shitty situation. They were both victims. But even though the sisters were finally on good terms, Nebula still had another score to settle. There are little girls like you across the universe who are in danger. You can stay with us and help them. I will help them by killing Thanos. I don't know if that's possible. She tries that, it doesn't go well. Some time ago, your sister snuck aboard this ship to kill me. Please don't do this. She very nearly succeeded. So I brought her here. To talk. Thanos tortures Nebula in order to force Gamora to reveal the location of another one of the Infinity Stones, something that she happens to know but kept a secret from Thanos for obvious reasons. You know, if you divorce yourself from the context of a bunch of over-the-top superhero movies, there's a lot of fucked up stuff going on here. Murder, genocide, domestic abuse, torture. Like, if these people didn't have green and purple skin, would this be more disturbing? So anyway, Gamora is forced to lead Thanos to an infinity stone called the Soul Stone. And when they arrive, they find that the stone has a guardian who has a hefty price for his treasure. In order to take the stone, you must lose that which you love. A soul for a soul. Really? Tears? Oh, he traumatized her on a daily basis, but he actually loved her. Yawn. But yeah, Thanos sacrifices Gamora in exchange for the Soul Stone. What a dick. So the superheroes of Earth, known as the Avengers, have teamed up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and Nebula to try and stop Thanos from collecting the Infinity Stones. By the time they confront him, he's already got like four of them, which in and of itself makes him nearly unstoppable. And during the battle, it doesn't take long for Nebula to realize what has happened. You took her to warn me. He came back with the soul stone. And she did it. Thanos eventually gets all of the Infinity Stones despite heavy resistance from the forces of Earth, and he succeeds in his mission. He destroys half of all life in the universe with a snap of his finger. Something's happening. You 
know, I forgot how depressing Infinity War was. He killed Spider-Man. Nebula finds herself among the half of the population who was spared by the snap. I wonder if the fact that she's like half robot had anything to do with it. But she'd already lost her sister and her father completed his mission and was unlikely to resurface. Everything she set out to do kinda ended up not mattering. In the aftermath of the battle with Thanos, Nebula finds herself on a ship with one of Earth's heroes, Tony Stark, as her only living companion. But the ship is running low on fuel and oxygen, not to mention food and water, and it becomes clear very quickly that they won't survive the trip. Nebula will probably last a little bit longer than Tony due to much of her body being inorganic, but the unlikely duo eventually resigns themselves to their fate. This is an interesting set of scenes because Tony Stark is arguably the main character of the first 10 years of the MCU. And by this point, he's kind of already had his arc for the most part. Like, he used to be kind of a jerk, but he fell in love and became friends with this random kid and became a hero, and now he's pretty cool. Later in the movie, he's gonna sacrifice himself to save the universe. Classic redemption arc. But Nebula is still very much conflicted. Tony has had many heroic adventures. He did measurable good in the world. And then he eventually found people and things that were important to him. So while he's upset about losing to Thanos, he could die knowing that he lived a purposeful life. While Nebula has spent the majority of her life trying to endlessly please a tyrant that she was never gonna be good enough for. The same guy who murdered her sister just as they were starting to become friends. While stranded on the ship, Tony sends a heartfelt final message to his fiance, but Nebula has no one to send any messages to. There's a great scene where Nebula and Tony play paper football together. That's a goal. We are now one apiece. I would like to try again. And even though it's a simple game of paper football, Nebula seems almost moved by the fact that Tony is gracious and congratulatory when she wins. And you've won. Congratulations. Fair game. Good sport. You have fun? It was fun. Winning is not something she's been able to enjoy much in her life, much less fun in general. Fortunately, Tony and Nebula get rescued by Captain Marvel, who is basically the Superman of the MCU. She is exactly as strong as the plot needs her to be at that moment. And Nebula, Captain Marvel, and the rest of the Avengers who survived the snap track down and confront Thanos, hoping to reverse the damage he's caused. But it turns out grabbing the stones and clicking undo is gonna be a little harder than expected. We use the stones to destroy the stones it nearly killed me we have to tear this place apart yeah he, he, he has to be lying my father has many things a liar is not one of them oh thank you daughter Perhaps I treated you too harshly. In a fit of rage, one of the Avengers, Thor, executes Thanos. But this act of retribution has come far too late, much like Thanos' sudden display of compassion for Nebula. But despite all of the abuse, Thanos was the only father Nebula knew, and she still clearly felt sadness upon his death. Okay, luckily there are no less than like five super geniuses among the Avengers and their allies, so they put their heads and their technology together and come up with a way to travel back in time to get the Infinity Stones before Thanos does. Now, I know time travel is always really wacky in movies, and this is no exception, but I think they did a decent job of making it make enough sense for the movie to work. Think about it. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future and your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Exactly. I have no idea if it will make sense in this video though. So the heroes split into teams to go retrieve all the stones. It's a fun romp through memorable scenes of the old movies, it's great. Nebula is tasked with going back in time and retrieving the Purple Power Stone, the same one that found its way into Ronan's hands. But a complication occurs. Uh, uh, 
Since Nebula now exists in the same time as a past version of herself, the electronic parts of the two nebulas start to interact with each other. And past Thanos is able to search past Nebula's memory files, which have now synced with present Nebula's memory, and pretty much figure out exactly what the hero's plan is, including the fact that Nebula is working with them. So Thanos finds and captures present Nebula, which allows her to come face to face with the past version of herself, the version that still tries her best to please Thanos, even though it's proven to be a futile endeavor. And this version of Nebula finally has someone that she can bully and boss around, and it just so happens to be herself. She also meets past Gamora, who is still alive of course, and who is still working with Thanos. But remember, Gamora was already sick of Thanos' shit by this point, so our Nebula doesn't have to do much to convince Gamora to join her side and help her escape. In the future, what happens to you and me? I try to kill you. Several times. But eventually, we become friends. We become sisters. Come on. We can stop him. And this is reminiscent of an earlier scene where Gamora offers Nebula her hand, but in that context they were rivals. Finally, Nebula has an opportunity to fight alongside Gamora as her true ally and sister. Meanwhile, past Nebula is sent to infiltrate the present and steal the hero's technology in order for past Thanos to travel forward through time with his huge army to take the Infinity Stones from the Avengers. And this time, he's upping the ante. I know what I must do. I will shred this universe down to its last atom. And then, with the stones you've collected for me, create a new one, teeming with life that knows not what it has lost, but only what it has been given. And this all happened because of Nebula's computer brain. I hope you're still following me, by the way. Nope. Time travel is wacky. Past Nebula almost succeeds in retrieving the Infinity Stones for Thanos until she is confronted by the alternate version of herself. And although she has literally lived out this person's future, Nebula cannot convince her past self of a world where she doesn't live under the boot of her father, which is pretty heartbreaking. You can change. Now you might say that literally killing a past version of yourself as an allegory for personal growth is a little on the nose, but it was still a cool scene. It symbolizes Nebula finally confronting her inner demons and getting to a point where she can move on with her life. So anyway, the heroes are able to bring all the missing people back and defeat Thanos. Tony Stark dies and all the characters from all the movies go to his funeral, including Nebula. Because of course, he was her paper football buddy. And Nebula is invited to join the Guardians of the Galaxy in their heroic mischief across the universe. Over time, the Guardians become her new adopted family, a real family where people care for and look out for each other. She also keeps in touch with past Gamora, who I will now just call Gamora because the other one is dead. Of course, this version of Gamora never met up with the Guardians, but she was still able to find a solid group of homies herself. Nebula has several adventures with the Guardians, the most recent of which involved saving a bunch of animals and children from yet another genocidal lunatic. I don't need another speech by some impotent whack job whose mother didn't love him rationalizing why he needs to conquer the universe. At the end of this mission, however, Nebula decides to stay home and help raise the children they saved. I'm gonna leave the city. Make it the type of home I never had. Perhaps she can be a better parent than the one she had growing up. So there's no shortage of media in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and likewise, there is no shortage of YouTube videos analyzing and overanalyzing this media, and I totally understand if you're over it by now. But if you're an absolute fanboy like myself who can't get enough of the muscly flying guys going pew pew at each other, I highly recommend the videos of Nando V Movies. He covers everything MCU, but also just about everything superhero and comic book related in general. He has a lot of great videos on his YouTube channel, like this one where he defends phase four of the MCU, which I appreciate because I think it's underrated. 
Hawkeye might be the single Phase 4 project that has grown on me the most since I've seen it. Hawkeye was fucking dope. But he also has a lot of content that you can only find exclusively on our streaming service, which happens to also be called Nebula. How perfect. Like this video where he defends the X-Men 3 version of Juggernaut, which I also appreciate because that movie is hilarious and I genuinely love it. This shot of Juggernaut hurling Wolverine through the ceiling and Wolverine crashing through that same ceiling is so much fun and showcases what works about the X-Men movies. The action is tangible. Big fight scenes happen in a house or a suburb or a school because the X-Men are just like you and me. They have homes and the chaos of being a mutant sometimes causes those homes to be the playground of an unstoppable super being. So if you want to see exclusive stuff like that while also supporting independent creators like Nando and many, many others, including myself, consider getting a Nebula subscription. And by supporting, I mean we get paid literal dollars that we then use to keep making our videos better and better. You probably already follow a lot of Nebula creators on other platforms, and on Nebula you can also watch a lot of the same videos you would already be watching on YouTube and elsewhere, except with no ads and often days if not weeks early. Like if you had Nebula, you could have watched this video a day early. If you sign up for Nebula using my link in the description, I can get you 40% off an annual subscription, which comes out to about $250 a month. And your subscription will also unlock Nebula classes, which is just a bonus for any of you that are creators yourself who want to step up their game, or if you're just curious about how all this content creation stuff works. So check it out, link in the description. There should be a video link on the screen that the YouTube robot thinks you might enjoy. Are they right? Let me know. Either way, that's the end of this video. Stay Heiko. Bye bye.